Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're talking about a Sony SRS LSR100. This unit is used with um, a television. So if you have perhaps I would say hard of hearing or um, you probably want to play the sound closer to yourself from the television then this is a quite a good piece of kit that Sony have made. <coughs> and um, there are not many around in that respect because not many people know about these but um, it's a good piece of equipment to use uh, as it sits a wireless handy speaker so you can pretty much play say for example uh, an episode of something and you want to keep listening to it and not watch it say for example you can carry it around with you in the house so the problem with this particular one is not turning on so let's get to the bottom of it and figure out what the problem is so Make sure that we've got the power on. Yep. So let's see. So we've got the dock. We've got that. So the box and the cable. Right. So basically, what we have here is we've got the dock that comes with it, and we've got the, the unit itself. Really nice piece of kit. Looks really nice. So let me plug in the mains cable. So let's see what we need to do. There we go, that goes in there. So let me plug this in, in the 5 volts. It should ideally turn on. Right, it comes on right now, as you can see it's charging, but when I take this off, it's charging light. There's absolutely no power in this unit, it's totally dead. So um, let's open it up and see where the problem is, and, um, and let's find out. So as you can see there's no screws underneath, so let's see if we've got something under these rubber cushions. Yep, looks like there is a few underneath there. Take off cushion number one. There we go. Let's take cushion number two. So the screws are now exposed. Let's see what's the best suitable screwdriver that we can use that can easily go in and open these up. So, aha. Uh -huh. At this particular one, it doesn't look like so, um, no, it's not one of those. Let's see which one it's taking. Is it one of these, maybe? So one of the star key ones actually. So that's um, very unusual to have a star key in a Sony piece of kit. But anyway, usually a lot of manufacturers intend to use star key, um, so people can't really open them, and they try to sort of lock them down so they can go back and say either it doesn't work, they can't fix it, can't open it and they just have to throw it away and get something else because obviously not everybody would actually know what type of screwdriver to use and if they can't fit in a normal Phillips screwdriver they would discard, discard the product as you can see it's a star key as you can see there crazy why would you use a star key screw in this because it's totally not necessary but then again Manufacturers want to preserve their equipment. <clears throat> so let's disconnect that. It's quite nicely done. So we've got um, two speaker wires and a flex cable there. And the actual battery actually sits underneath there. There's a battery underneath there. Um, let 
me just give you a minute so we can see. I'll be back in a tip. Right, so yeah, I went to just pick up a screwdriver. So here we are. Let's just disconnect the PCB. So, and we get to get to the bottom of it. it. Looks like we have a battery underneath here. And the battery will actually tell us where the problem is. Seems like it's a dead battery. So if we remove this section here, that's the battery is. <coughs> so let's disconnect this battery and disconnect it from here. The battery we need is a SP65Y, actually here, made by, doesn't say it's made by Sony, but it just says it's been there. And um, what uh, after doing some research, it seems that this battery is actually made for Sony and they use it in different equipment. And this particular battery that we have here is used in uh, Sony PS Vita. So we're going to use that same battery here. I mean, it might have a slightly different look at it, but the actual main thing that matters is the voltage. So this is a SP65M that's a SP65Y which obviously tells you that it which type of device it's going in but as far as the voltage is concerned this is 3.7 volts with both 2000 or should I say 2210 milliamps so that's 2010 milliamps uh, 2210 milliamps so yeah, so here's the replacement battery. So what we're going to do. The only thing is the connector is also the same as well. So there's absolutely no difference whatsoever. And the wiring is exactly the same as well. So if we have a PS Vita, this is the same connector, the same colours and everything. Yep. So let's see if we could um, play space. That's the name of the company, I think. So that's where the battery goes. It's got double sided sticky tape already on it. What we'll do is we should take off these screws and then refasten it again. Mm -hmm. And these prevent the battery from coming out. Amazing how these little things they actually design while they're making this. I'll let this, let's put a little screw there so the battery doesn't come out. And let's put that in place. And all the screws go back in. All five of them. We've got, we've got five screws here. And then after that, once we've put that in, we'll see. Oh, six screws, sorry, not five, six screws. I beg your pardon. It's just not. I. I'm going to use. Usually in um, devices that are bat rechargeable devices that are using batteries, if they don't turn on, that's only because of the battery. Um, because the battery takes a lot of charge and it provides power to the rest of the circuit and if the battery dies then the main kind of source of power disappears so let's see let's turn this over drifting away on let's put that clip back in and see if it fits first of all because it's all new to me I'm hoping it will fit in 
If it doesn't, that would be a... Yeah, that's okay. And then that goes that way. Right, let's, um, let's make sure that we um, get the pin the right way around. in because the red one is there. This one is showing me a little bit of resistance. I'm sure it'll go in if we wanted to press it in. with you I think this we have a problem with this connector so what I'm going to do <coughs> is going to um, use this connector here let's just quickly get to the bottom of it use my cutters it's always good to use the same type of connector that came with it Oh, this battery is no good, so the connector goes. I should be using the wire stripper, but I think I can uh, can manage without it at the moment, so it's not a big deal. Surprised what happened there, but it's okay, no big deal. What we ideally want to use also is some um, shrink wrap, heat shrink. I'll I just got some uh, heat shrink collar. We needed that because um, it's always good to use. I can't put tape on it on this particular piece because it just won't be neat. Um, we need to just make sure that we use the um, <coughs> the right colors. Let's pop that into the flux. Uh, the best way to solder, I would say, is to make sure, first of all, that all the cables that we have actually have got solder on them. Yep, and here we are. And this one here as well. And the 
this one here as well. So you can see if I just zoom in for you. So what we're trying to do is we're going to replace the connector. Same battery. And what we're trying to do is just create a nice joint. It's not pulling and tugging, it's just a one-off. That is the reason why we're going to be using Right, so we've got all the colours in place. Let's just what we're doing right now is let's see if it actually helps. Zoom into this area. Yeah. Soldering. So we're going to solder this one here. That's in. And we're going to bring the actual heat shrink sleeve on top of the solder joint. And I'll just put my solder on that like that to seal it off. And that's done. There we go. Right. We've got wire number two. So we join it again. Let me see if we can capture this on camera correctly. Really nice piece. There we go. There we are. So we join this wire here. Like that. And there we go. See the wire is now joined together. Seems alright to me. And we just roll the sleeve on top like that. Here we are. Just make sure it covers all the entire solder area. And just give it a bit of heat. So it kind of wraps itself around the wire collar. There we go. That's done as well. The last one. What we need to do here is I need to make sure that that is also done in a similar way. And that solder together. And all we do is put this collar sleeve back on like that. Give it a bit of heat. And that should then just wrap itself around the actual area where it's need to be. There we go, absolutely beautiful. Right, now that is all done, all we now need to do is let's zoom ourselves back a bit and so you can now connect this connector. Here we go, that's back on. The wires are all connected and they are safe to use because they've all got shrink, heat shrink wrap on them as well, so they're all separated. And right, so let's get the unit back into its shape again. So we've put all of this stuff away. So this piece here. If I'm correct in remembering these, these ribbon cables are actually amazing. These and they do so much work, and um, sometimes they uh, can be very fragile as well at the same time. So we have to make sure that they are connected correctly. There we go. That's all in. Ribbon cables in. We just need to put this big cables in, I believe. That's one. That's two. And let's pop that back into its place. If I'm not mistaken, that should go in nicely. Here we go. That's all comes out. Just make sure that all the connectors are coming up okay. 
we can test it now and see if it's turning on. It should, hopefully. Let's see if it's charging. Yep. Here we are, the charge light has come on. As you can see, interesting. Yeah, there it is. You can see that the charge light is charging now. So let's give it a few minutes and it should burst into life. Let's see what else. Um, I do need to plug in an audio cable to an audio source, so bear with me and I'll be back. Come back to you in a minute. Hi, welcome back. I was uh, just looking to charge this unit for a little while because it hasn't been charged for so long, so um, I had to just make sure it charged. And also looking for a source to get sound into it. So I found a, um, a Bluetooth uh, receiver, so I'm going to put give the source as that because um, my iPhone uh, dongle is missing. You know the one that they use. Uh, they don't use phone anymore, so I have to use Bluetooth receivers now to give sound. So yeah, so it seems all good so far. Let's put all the screws back in place and and then see what the result is. The screws are pretty pretty deep in this particular unit, so I have to actually pull my screwdriver out because usually the screws are not that deep. But, um, Now unit is back together. Let's put the legs back on. Come on. There we 
they go. So they're all self adhesive. So, so let's put that back on the dock. Now what that would do is that would just synchronize with the the uh, the cradle itself. So when we play the song, it will go through. So let's zoom out. Oops. Let's zoom out. Right, so here we are. So say for example that TV is now connected to this unit. So um, let me just find a song that perhaps doesn't have monetization. Otherwise YouTube keeps sending me messages saying I'm playing something that's more monetized. Here we go. That sounds good. Right, so let's see if we can play this tune. And we connected that to so the Bluetooth phone is now connected to my Bluetooth receiver. Receiver is sending a signal to this unit. The unit is just going to send an output to the sound, whatever is going in. It could be television or whatever. So in this case, it's designed for TV. So let's see. <laughs> The idea behind this is so let's see we lift this and the sound goes with you wherever we are. So basically we've got the dock connected to the TV. This we can then take it into kitchen or upstairs in the room, wherever the television is playing. And sometimes if you're really eager uh, to watch TV and you're watching a channel and there's advertisers coming on and you think well you know let me do something and I'll get back to the you know to the channel again obviously if you're not recording and then uh, you can see that oh yeah I know where it is so yeah you can see that so it's a really good piece of kit this is it sounds really good but what it needed was a battery that's what it was after the battery this thing is just Superb, excellent design, as you can see from the back as well. Um, it's lightweight, it's not that heavy, and when you're not using it, just bring it back on the dock, put it back, and all the light just comes on, showing that it's playing. It's really well made, I would have to say, this particular one, because this one is made in Japan. It's very well made, and it's a very good piece of kit. Uh, there are not many around in the market at the moment that I've seen people displaying it or demoing it um, because it's kind of a specialist item so say if you've got like uh, parents that have impaired hearing or, or people that have impaired hearing uh, anybody basically um, and, and, and they want to listen to the uh, this sound um, and they don't want to wear headphones um, this, is, this is a good solution for that I mean, you know, at a certain age you don't want to have anything dangling on your neck like those comfort wear things that they've introduced nowadays on the neck that you can wear. Um, yeah, that's quite a nice idea, but then again, it just all goes with age because, you know, with age people change and they don't want to have anything around their ears or something or whatever. So this is a quite nice piece of kit, so it gives you the luxury of having sound close to you, not on you. So you're not wearing anything and it's there right next to you. You could use a Bluetooth speaker as well, uh, but your television must have Bluetooth. But if your television doesn't have Bluetooth, then this is an excellent solution. Or if you're, if you're obviously with Bluetooth, you have to kind of, you know, faff around with uh, pairing and this, that, the other. With this, is you don't have to do worry about pairing. It's automatically all paired to one base unit, which is this one here. And it's hardwired into your television. Uh, it also has a digital digital optical in which is excellent because that way you could have a direct audio out sound coming into the box itself without switching anything because usually this the optical out us. signal the would give you a sound on coming out from the speaker uh, from television as well as from the optical source and also you don't need to connect or, or the remote to it, uh, television remote to the optical source or whatever because it will just give you a straight sound and you can you know use that so basically you can turn the TV volume off and this will still work um, when, when you want to ID. so it's brilliant <coughs> Thank you. 
this is the purpose of having this. I know that it says it's got radio in it as well, which I haven't tested yet. But it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to ask. But I'm usually going through all sorts of gadgets, trying to find ways to um, improve things or make things better. So uh, this one came across to be quite instant, interesting, so I thought I'd let you do a video for this. So yeah, here we are. We are looking at a Sony... LSR 100. Thanks for watching, until next time, bye for now.